Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the second meeting of the Advisory Committee for the State Health Assessment and State Health Improvement Plan. This is Amy Stevens at the Health Policy Institute of Ohio, and I'm, I'm joined in the room here today by staff from the Ohio Department of Health, including Director Himes. Um, who's going to speak in a minute here, and also um, the team from Accenture, who's going to be demonstrating the um, online shop for us later in the call today. We want to make sure that this meeting can be as interactive as possible today. So as we go along, feel free to type in any questions or comments in the chat box and we will um, make an effort to get to all of those during the call today. And you can also raise your hand. We're gonna have some points in the meeting today um, when we're, we'll have some discussion questions. And if you would like to um, speak to the group, you hit that um, little hand icon and that will let us know that you want to speak and we will unmute you. So um, we, we are not gonna unmute everyone at the same time since that can be a little bit chaotic. So we will um, unmute folks. If you have muted yourself on your computer or are your, are on your phone, you will also need to unmute yourself. Um, so if we're not able to hear you, that's probably why. Um, so right now, everyone is on mute. Um, and uh, hopefully that will work. So we have lots of folks in the room and we'll be switching be between presenters and speakers and um, allowing opportunity for input. So uh, bear with us. There might be a few pauses between speakers as we um, switch, switch hands here. This is our agenda for the meeting today. Hopefully everyone had a chance to look at the pre-read packet that we sent ahead of time. If not, all of the uh, materials are still posted on the Shawship page on the HPIO website. These are the objectives for the meeting today. And these are the objectives specific to the input that um, we at HPIO and ODH and Accenture um, are looking forward to getting from all of you. Now I'm gonna um, do a recap of the purpose and process of the Shaw and the SHIP. And we are gonna start with a quick poll question. How familiar are you with the Shaw and the SHIP? So are you completely new to this process? Are you somewhat familiar, but a little fuzzy on the details or been there, done that, bought the t-shirt? So maybe you were involved um, last time in 2016, um, went to a regional forum, um, have read the Shaw, have read the SHIP. So please take a second here and let us know which best describes you. All right, let's share those results. Okay, so we have some hardcore Shawship folks on the call, so that's wonderful. Um, but we will also be mindful of providing some background information for those who are newer to the process as well. Okay, next slide. As a reminder, this is the vision and mission for the Sean ship. So this is really why we're here. As a quick refresher, the blue document on the left is the state health assessment, which was released in 2016. And this is really a comprehensive picture of the health and well being um, of Ohioans. And the purpose of the SHA is to inform the SHIP. And the green document it was the 2017 2019 SHIP, which is really a strategic menu of priorities, outcome objectives, and evidence based strategies that are being implemented by state agencies and also local health departments, hospitals, and their local partners. And then the TEAL document is the guidance for local health departments and hospitals that was issued by the Department of Health in 2017. First, I'm gonna talk about the process for the state health 
assessment for 2019. These are um, the components for the SHA and there are some new features for the SHA this time around um, that are pretty exciting. So we will have the online interactive SHA that we're gonna see a demonstration of uh, in a little bit here, and it includes county level data. So we definitely have heard from stakeholders throughout this process that county level data is really important and valuable. And so um, ODH and the Accenture team have worked really hard to include that county level data. And of course, um, folks on the call should be familiar with the regional forums and the online survey that were done in October. And we reported on the results of those um, in the December meeting and the report for that is posted online if you wanna take a closer look at that. Uh, towards the end of this process, we at HPIO will be developing a PDF summary report that will accompany the online SHA. And we'll talk about that later in the meeting. Here is the timeline for the SHA. And note that we're going to be asking all of you for your feedback on the draft SHA in late early, late April to early May. And then the final SHA will be released uh, June 1st. And note that at the same time, we are also working on the maternal and child health and maternal and infant early childhood home visiting or MICV assessments. And so those will be coordinated, aligned and streamlined as we're working on the Shaw and SHIP as well. Now we'll talk briefly about where we're headed with updating the SHIP. Here's a brief version of the 2017-2019 SHIP framework. And during the prioritization process for the new SHIP, we'll be talking about any changes that we might wanna make to each part of this framework, including those outcome objectives and the menu of strategies. In order to identify priorities in the SHIP, we'll be relying on these three sources of information. So stakeholder input, secondary data. Um, so this is referring to data from vital statistics, behavioral risk factor surveillance survey, Census Bureau, Department of Education, and many, many other sources, um, which you'll see, see in the online Shaw in just a minute here. And then also feedback from all of you through the advisory committee meetings, um, the feedback survey on the draft Shaw, and then also the steering committee. Here's a closer look at these elements. Here's the timeline for the ship. And you'll see that we'll be quite busy in the summer with bringing together the priority work teams to set targets and um, develop those SMART objectives and then to also select the strategies. I want to say a little bit about the role of the advisory committee. Uh, we're really relying on all of you to give us input and guidance on the SHA and the SHIP. This is the current sector representation for the advisory committee, and we will continue to add members to this list, particularly when we get to um, the SHIP part of the work um, later on this spring and into summer. And we're very interested in including um, representatives from sectors beyond health. So if you have some partners that you're working with in housing or transportation or education um, that you think would be a great addition to this group, please um, send me an email and let us know. Here's where you can find um, all of the information about the Shaw SHIP process. And I am gonna turn it over to Director Hines. Oops. Thank you, Amy, <clears throat> I appreciate it. And thanks to all of the advisory committee members who have joined us here today. 
it looks like about 63 are in attendance, so that's <clears throat> pretty good. We appreciate you sharing some time with us on Valentine's Day. Um, I just have some brief remarks, um, and then I'll introduce the Accenture team uh, to share the uh, preliminary Shaw online tool. Um, but I do want to thank you for your participation in this. I think one of the things that we learned through our regional meetings um, was that involvement and engagement with stakeholders um, in the design <clears throat> of the Shaw, and that will certainly, as Amy explained, lead to the, the ship, the f formulation of the ship, but engagement with um, stakeholders, including our traditional stakeholders in public health, but also those non-traditional cross-sector stakeholders in other areas, um, that's really going to help us produce a document um, and information and, and data that will guide um, our population health planning statewide. So really appreciate everybody's involvement from those uh, non-traditional sectors. Um, <clears throat> in general, you know, the state health assessment is going to describe the current status of health and well-being in Ohio. It highlights the opportunities and challenges um, that we've got to improve health outcomes, reduce disparities, and control healthcare spending. Um, <clears throat> it will form um, the basis for our ship, which provides specific goals and strategies designed to achieve measurable improvements on those key priorities, and, and Amy shared some of those in, on an earlier slide. Um, so really involvement of local level stakeholders uh, to pick those objectives and strategies, um, involvement of state agencies, local health departments, hospitals, other community partners is key to that. And again, including those sectors beyond health is very important. And we want to make sure that education, housing, employment, <clears throat> and other regional planning efforts are included in this uh, statewide planning process. Um, I won't touch on the timing, um, as Amy already discussed that, but I do want to make sure that um, we are sharing the preliminary state of health assessment and the online tool with stakeholders. Stakeholders, It's, it's part of our accreditation process um, to pr provide an, the, that information and to get that input from people who will be using this tool. So really encourage you to provide comments or questions um, when Accenture goes over uh, the online Shaw today and certainly throughout this process, feel free to reach out to the Department of Health or HPIO with questions and suggestions on how we can make this better. <clears throat> but today, we're really excited to share uh, the preliminary online Shaw tool. I've seen it a few times now. It's very cool, very impressive. It's, it's data rich, but it's very user friendly, I believe. So I'm hopeful um, that your comments will continue to improve upon that. Um, so thank you for joining us. And I'd like to introduce our Accenture team of Charlie Hack and Matt Littlejohn, who will demonstrate a few examples of the online Shaw. And there'll be some questions and um, opportunity for comment built into that. Thank you. Thank you, Director Himes, and uh, thank you all very much for joining us um, today and for your comments and discussion. Um, we're going to share the screen now to um, show you a couple, a subset of the entire online shot. There is a lot here, as you're all familiar with uh, um, the, the 2016 shot, there's, there's a lot of data. And so what we've really tried to do here is replicate um, all of that uh, immense amount of work um, that went in from HPIO in an interactive form here. Um, I want to note that this is not yet finalized, um, and your suggestions are very welcome and very uh, much appreciated. Um, and any feedback can be sent um, to the email address informatics at odh.ohio.gov. Um, um, uh, and that will be appreciated. All right. Um, so uh, I want to introduce uh, Matt Littlejohn from the team. Um, Matt, what are we looking at here? This is our table of contents, yeah? Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. So what we see right now is the landing page for the show. You're on mute, I think. Hang on one second. Yeah, click that. Muted, maybe. Try again. All right, can you all hear me now? Yes. All right, sorry about that, guys. Good afternoon, everybody. 
So the first page I want to show you is the landing page for the SHA. So when you go to the SHA, what you see start with is the table of contents. So this is organized alphabetically, first by domain. So for example, access to healthcare, demographics, healthcare spending, and then next to it is each subdomain that is lies within the domain. And when you click on one of these arrows, it will jump to that domain and if you need to go to something more specific, up at the top we have a search bar. So this will allow you to, let's say you wanted to get information about literacy. So if you type in reading and hit return, it'll automatically take you to that domain. And when you want to search something else, such as smoking or tobacco, uh, the same thing will it'll appear for the different domain, population health and health behaviors. If you want to go back to all of them, you just clear the title, hit return, and then it takes you to the main landing page. So the next thing we want to show you is the summary tab. And so real quick, you, you can notice the um, this home button at the top corner right here. This is your main going to be your main navigation pane. So anytime you want to return to a different subdomain or domain, you click on this home button and it'll take you back to the landing page. And that way you can see uh, all the other domains and subdomains. So this page um, is kind of a summary uh, over all of the 100, almost, almost 200, 200 some odd metrics in, in the online, online shop. And uh, this functionality was something that um, HPIO was very uh, keen on. The point here is to be, to provide a very quick and intuitive way to tell which metrics uh, in the SHA in which Ohio is lagging the farthest behind the US at large uh, and vice versa, which, which metrics is Ohio really doing better than the country at large. So that's really the left half of the screen that you see now. And then on the right hand side, you can see which um, again, sorted all of those metrics um, that are in the SHA where Ohio has trended much worse um, in recent years. And likewise, those metrics which Ohio has been trending much better. So um, Matt, if you select that drop down, you can see how the different ways in which you can sort this. Let's start on the left hand side and try and sort it, um, let's say worst to best comparison of Ohio versus US. Um, so, um, somewhat intuitive, the metric where Ohio is the single, um, compares least favorably with the U.S. Uh, for 2017 is drug overdose deaths. Um, you can see some intuitive, uh, um, uh, uh, items here. One that we thought was, was, um, less intuitive that stood out was adverse childhood experiences. Um, you can see that adverse childhood experiences for the subpopulation of others, non-Hispanic, as well as Hispanic, um, are significantly higher than the country at large. I just wanted to give a couple of examples of how you can read this information and use it. And Matt, if you scroll now all the way to the bottom of this, again, this is a listing of all of the metrics in the SHA and sort of how you, Ohio is comparing. Um, to the U.S. looks like we're doing significantly better on HIV prevalence there. Oh, and it's color coded. So um, blue means that Ohio is doing better than the U.S. and red is worse. Um, so uh, it's um, we sort of coded the directionality, if that makes sense, for better or worse. Um, and then likewise, on the right hand side, you can sort uh, um, in a couple of different ways, alphabetically or, or worst to best, based on how um, Ohio is trending. Okay, uh, let's move to demographics. So, um, Matt, can you demonstrate a couple of the functionalities here? Um, this moves to the real kind of data profile section um, of the SHA, and uh, there is a lot of data here. And it can be a little bit um, um, busy, but I think if you if you focus kind of one by one on the charts, you'll see how some of this information can be useful. So one of the first things um, that you'll notice is um, the ability to um, to show data based on a specific county. 
in Ohio. And Matt, can you can you show us how, if you click that hamburger in the top left corner, how that works? Okay. So when you click this hamburger in the top left corner, you will see a list of all the counties broken down by region. So if, for example, we were to select Franklin County, you'll notice a couple of changes almost immediately. So the first thing you notice is the colors change. So we, when we were designing this, we had it so that when you're looking at the state total metrics, the bars were red. And when you're focusing on a specific county, the bars would change to blue. So that way there was no confusion as to what was the state level data and what was the county level data. In addition, as Charlie mentioned, there is a lot of data on here and it can be a little overwhelming at first, especially if you have certain different metrics, it can be confusing to understand what each metric means. So if you scroll over any of the points, uh, a tooltip will pop up. And what this tooltip contains is the actual metric, whether or not that metric is better or worse than the Ohio average for that county, as well as the source. For example, in this case, for the population distribution, uh, you can see it came from the US Census Bureau American Community Surveys five-year estimates. Now, the really fun thing about this as well is in the online version, you will be able to actually download the data. So let's say, for example, you wanted to download the, uh, this population distribution up here. Right, switch over to the online. So what you would do is you would click on the metric you want to download. And yeah, so you would click on the metric you want to download, in this case, population, age, and distribution. And then you would click on this download button. Now, when you click on the download button, you can either download it as an image or a PDF image, or you can download the raw data or the crosstab data, which you can view in Excel. So by doing that, an Excel file will automatically download. And when you open it, you will get the data for that county or the state as a whole, as well as the age distribution, the region it was in, the year it was in, the percentage and the actual count, percent male, percent female. So this is, we thought this would be a very powerful tool to help HPI, especially when they came time to compile the PDF format, as well as help with uh, quantifying the, uh, the ship. All right, let's go back here. Right. Um, let's, so uh, this screen, demographics, a lot of census data, data about the population, data about the distribution of the population, um, um, data about the, the various breakdowns of the population. There are, this goes on, there are actually, a couple more uh, demographics screens that go into some more detail. And because of time constraints, we're not going to have time to go into everything uh, today, um, but this will be available soon um, for all uh, to use. One other um, fun fact is that the color schemes are colorblind friendly. Um, we took care to, to, to make sure that that was the case um, so that it's readable for everyone. Um, let's go to leading causes of death, Matt. Okay. Um, so this is a view of the leading ways in which Ohioans um, are dying. Again, uh, you have the ability to select uh, by county. So Matt, if you can demonstrate, I think we're looking at Butler County now. Let's choose a different one. Let's choose... Um, Let's choose um, a very rural county, maybe. Let's choose Scioto County. So as you can see, when you click any of the counties, all of the, the charts will update. And what you can see, um, starting from the left-hand side, the leading causes of death, which are broken down by the total population, African-American only and white only. Those are the, the three bubbles there. And if you hover over any, it will tell you uh, what you're looking at. This is, in this case, is the age-adjusted mortality rates. Uh, immediately to the right, you have the trend over the last four years, how Scioto County, which is the blue line, is comparing to the red uh, blocks, which are Ohio, uh, following our same color scheme. So light blue, I'm a, I'm a Columbia guy, so that's my favorite color. Uh, light blue for the county, red for Ohio, red there, like in the, in the state logo. Um, and then uh, we have something called YPLL, which probably a lot of uh, folks on the call 
are familiar with. This is, and I'm definitely not the best person in this room to define what YPLL is given, um, but I'm going to try because I'm the one on mic right now. So what it's, what it's, and actually I, you don't even have to try, take my word for it, Matt, if you hover over um, the what a YPLL it will tell you. So years of potential life lost before age 75. Essentially, if you look at uh, anybody who dies before the age of 75, um, add up the total number of sort of years that are owed to that life expectancy per 1,000 population age adjusted. I'm kind of butchering it, but essentially it's a measure of how much uh, how much um, how how much life is lost due to premature death um, before age of 75. You can see the county map here, best to worst. Um, likewise, the trend over time for this county, and then um, all the way on the right you have all cause uh, or you have the leading causes of death broken down by YPLL and by race. And this again is county specific. So right now um, there's a lot of redactions because of a small N, but if you choose a different county, Matt, let's say um, Hamilton County next door, uh, not quite next door, but nearby, um, it's in the Southwest corner, there you go. Um, here, so we have some more data here, and um, it's quite um, uh, shocking at times to see the some of the racial uh, disparities in YPLL specifically. It's quite um, uh, uh, somewhat uh, morbid, um, but um, these are what the data show. Um, let's keep moving because we're a little short on time. So if we go now, uh, Matt, to population health. All right. Um, so Matt, what are we seeing here on this page? All right. So what we are seeing here is various measures to demonstrate how overall healthy and the overall well-being of, in this case, Franklin County. So again, we do have multiple metrics that show how the state is comparing to the United States and how the, um, in some cases, how the county is comparing to not only the state of Ohio, but to the United States as well. And in addition, we also have a, a metric for infant mortality right here. So one thing, again, like Charlie mentioned, to ensure confidentiality and privacy, if you, for example, you looked at uh, Vinton County, um, you would see that there's no kind of reported. This is to preserve the privacy and maintain HIPAA compliance. Yes, but if you scroll over to other counties, you can still see how we're collecting data for all the counties and are presenting it in a way that each county and, and each admin at the local level can compare how the state is doing to other counties doing to the state as well as the country. And we also have various other metrics that were pulled from the Shaw from 2016 as well. And we also did our best to maintain the richness of the US data in addition to providing the county level data. And in addition to population health, we did not just stop there. We also looked at the, yeah. We have multiple population health metrics. Uh, and you can see for this one, we are showing uh, various conditions and diseases. Um, in this case, for low birth weight, um, preterm births, and prevalence of hypertension among adults by income and by race and ethnicity, and as well as metrics for other um, common conditions and disease. And we also have more conditions and diseases, as you can see here. Um, in this case, we have adult obesity. Uh, we do have um, diabetes and as well as various other breakdowns by demographics such as age, income, and race ethnicity. Wherever possible, we've also uh, endeavored to include that yellow line for what is the Healthy People 2020 goal, um, uh, as well as often you can see that vertical gray line for what is the Ohio average um, whenever it's broken down by multiple uh, uh, subcategories. Just going to keep it moving here. Population health goes on. Um, here we have injury and violence. Um, so a number of different uh, time charts here. Matt, if you try selecting a different county, we're still on Scioto here. But what if we choose some place in the northeast, like Cuyahoga County? Um, so you can see how everything um, updates 
uh, we have Cuyahoga County versus Ohio, and in, in some cases, um, uh, the US as well, uh, how your county is trending um, and, and, and where uh, injury and violence uh, deaths are occurring. And the last population health uh, screen looks at health behaviors, um, substance abuse, uh, smoking prevalence um, by population type. Um, there's some data here from surveys like BRFSS, um, where it's drawn from. If you hover over a couple of these charts, Matt, you can see some of the data sources here. This is from National Survey on Drug Use and Health. All right, let's move to spending. <clears throat> Here we have a breakdown of several metrics of interest around healthcare spending. Um, so you can see there's a section on Medicare at left. This has comparisons for a given county, Ohio and the United States broken down by race. Uh, for the uh, impact of the number of chronic conditions on annual standardized risk-adjusted costs, that is a mouthful per Medicare beneficiary. beneficiary. Um, a number of different breakdowns of Medicare spending and Medicaid spending. The one that I always makes my jaw drop is looking at the lower right at average annual premium trends um, Healthcare is really expensive, and it does not appear to be getting any cheaper um, for a family or a, an individual. <clears throat> All right, if we move on to social and economic environment, um, and we'll wrap up in a few minutes so we have time for uh, discussion, just a couple of metrics here on employment and poverty is just to note how this usually works. You have uh, the subdomain there in that gray bar at the top of the screen uh, and the, the overall domain at the at top. Um, um, so looking at these trends over time in comparison. Uh, and finally, um, not gonna have a chance to see everything today, but um, Here's social and economic environment, some data on education, uh, kindergarten readiness assessment and literacy here in the three bands. Uh, you can see high school graduation rates. These are um, uh, uh, dynamic uh, by county. And um, I think um, uh, a couple more here, but I wanna make sure that we have time for questions. Um, so uh, why don't we, the last one I'll show is healthcare system, looking at preventive services and hospital util utilization. Again, data drawn from a whole variety of different Ohio sources, uh, all payer, all cause hospital uh, readmission rate from a, uh, Ohio Hospital Association here, um, outpatient days, uh, and comparison of the county to uh, the country at large and um, how that breaks down trends over time. There we are. Some, some data is not available at the county level due to small, um, a small N. Okay, um, why don't we pause there and I want to turn it back over to Amy. Uh, Amy's going to take the hand again, and we will um, have some time for discussion. Thank you all for listening to that blitz of data. Thank you so much, Charlie and Matt. That was really great to be able to see the, the fruits of all of your work over the past several months. We now would like to take a few minutes to get some feedback from all of you, and we have some discussion questions that we're gonna pull up here. And remember that you can use the hand button to raise your hand if you wanna ask a question of us. Um, you can also use the chat box. I, I've seen some positive comments come through on the chat box. Um, 
saying, looks great, totally impressed. This is amazing, excited to see the local data. Um, and I also see a hand. I see that Susan Sprigg has a raised hand. Um, should we try to unmute Susan and see if we can hear her? <laughs> Bear with us just a moment. All right, Susan. I'm not hearing you, Susan. Oh, she says she has no mic and she's typed in a question. So her question is, looks great. How often will it be updated? And also, I couldn't tell how you were navigating from page to page. Do you have an index um, that you can scan the available charts and get the correct page? So multi-part question there, but I will turn it over to Sure. Uh, sure. Thank you so much for the question. Um, it's a great question. So to the first part, how often will it be updated? I think TBD, but once per year is is the is the um, is the plan at, at the moment. Some of these data are only available on an annualized basis, anyways. Um, um, uh, others, uh, such as vital stats, are basically live, so there's a potential, but the plan is for now annual refresh. And then to the second question, how we're navigating, we're kind of cheating right now, uh, so I, it's a very pert, pert observation, but um, I think we, we we took the screen off actually, um, but maybe it would help to, to relaunch that so I can show you, so we can show you how that works. But yes, the main uh, navigation page is that table of contents where we, be, we began. From the table of contents, you can either go directly to a subdomain or you can search for your desired metric um, in the search bar, which will point you to the, to the, to the relevant subdomain or subdomains, because some, some topics span multiple. And then if you want to go somewhere else, you can either use the small uh, little tabs, which are at the bottom of the screen, or click the home button to go back to the top, uh, to the table of contents. And that home button will always be visible on the top right-hand corner of the screen. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to take another um, typed-in question here. Um, very useful tool. Is there a way for LHDs to get a large data download on a range of indicators, or do they need to download the raw data one indicator at, at a time? The graphs and maps would also be very helpful for some of our CHIP work, Community Health Improvement Plan work, if accessible in high resolution with proper citation. Thank you, Tick. Sure. Um, so, yes. Um, the data uh, um, can be downloaded kind of per panel here. Um, there's probably a way to do a massive one data poll, although I don't have a solid answer at the at the moment. Matt is writing me some message here. Uh, it's for Sean. It's sorry. It's for DB. It's to check Got it. One. Yes, so um, TBD on that second point, but you can certainly download it by panel in the way um, that we showed. And then the second part of the question was, um, um, oh, images. images yes, and so the other th nice thing, so if you look, I'll give you, oh, well, I'm not sharing screen anymore. But um, if you click that in the same exact way that we've demonstrated it with the download button, um, it will give you a couple of options. When you click download, it will say download data and then it'll take you to like a screen with the data table it'll give you an image so you can download a png file or jpeg um, it will download directly to your browser and that image includes um, the relevant chart along with um, the tool tip which contains the citation and the data source um, and then you can also download it in a pdf form which is sometimes helpful for like presentations and stuff like that Hopefully that uh, 
addresses okay. the question. Thank you. I also see that um, Jim Watkins has his hand raised. Uh, if you could, well, we will unmute you. Okay, looks like maybe you're on your computer rather than your phone, and so we may not be able to unmute you. That may not work. Yeah, you may need to unmute yourself or enter the audio pin. Give it a second here, and I'm going to scan to look and see if there are any other hands raised. Don't see any other hands raised. We did get another chat comment. Um, this is great. Is the online version available now for us to look at? It's not posted yet. Um, we will be sharing it with the advisory committee um, later this spring um, before releasing it fully to the world on June 1st. So stay tuned, watch your email, and we will um, send you a link um, before June. Okay, and all right, we are going to move on to the next part of our agenda, um, which Zach Reet from the HPIO team is going to talk about some uh, new metrics to add to the Shaw. Take it away, Zach. Hey, thank you so much, Amy. Um, now we're going to talk about uh, adding a few new metrics to the online SHA and uh, the process that we'll use for voting on those metrics. First, we'll start with a quick review of what was in the 2016 SHA data profiles, um, since that is what Accenture has been using to build the online SHA that we just saw. Um, the 2016 SHA included over 140 metrics, um, and you can go to the state health assessment on pages 8 through 11 uh, to see a list of those. And on this slide, you see all of the data elements that were included for each one of those metrics when they were available in the online SHA, or excuse me, in the 2016 SHA. Here you see the domains that those metrics were divided into. Again, these are the domains that showed up on the um, navigation page of the online trial we just saw. During the regional forum discussions and then also in the online survey, um, stakeholders provided feedback about adding new metrics around the topic areas you see on the slide. Uh, there were already some housing and child welfare metrics in the 2016 SHA but those were emphasized as being really important, and so we are um, considering some new metrics to be added around that topic. The 2016 SHA didn't have any transportation, um, hepatitis, or medication-assisted treatment, or uh, drug court metrics, um, but again, those came out as uh, important issues in the regional forums to be looked at. Hopefully, you have had a chance to review the Excel list that was sent around on Monday. Um, that lists all of the potential metrics we're going to be reviewing today. We developed a, a list of 17 metrics with uh, publicly available data, and our goal today is to trim that down to about 10 uh, new metrics to be added to the online SHA. If you were not able to review that Excel um, before, before this webinar, please do open that file now. Um, you can find it on the HPIO website under the Shaw Ship group, um, and there is a, a folder for uh, the second advisory committee meeting where you'll be able to find that list of potential metrics. If you know of other metrics, as, as you are the experts, if you know of other metrics with available data that you think we ought to be considering, please type a message into the chat box or send us an email about those. But we've assembled this list of um, 17 metrics because we believe that they um, capture some of the important uh, issues in these topic areas. So now the process for narrowing down. Uh, we're going to briefly review each of the metrics from the identified priority areas and then give you a chance to ask some clarifying questions about the metrics. And then we'll be using the same um, polling question technology to collect your input on which metrics we ought to add. And the voting that happens on this webinar will uh, inform that process of narrowing down 
the metrics to a list of 10. As you're uh, reviewing the metrics, uh, asking your questions and responding to the polls, please be considering these criteria. Um, none of these are deal breakers, um, and it is very challenging to find metrics that meet all four of these criteria, particularly around um, some of these topic areas. So now we'll take a look at the housing metrics. Um, again, you can refer to the Excel uh, sheet that included additional detail about each of these metrics, including their source, whether or not U.S. comparison da data is available, what years of data are available, um, and then what sort of breakouts or information on disparities or iniquities is available for these metrics. Um, there are a few slides, or excuse me, a few metrics on these slides that uh, do not have state level data available, but they may have city, metro area, or census tract um, uh, level data available. And those are all marked with the asterisks that you can see on this screen. Okay, so hopefully in that um, interim, you've had a chance to open that Excel list. Um, and now we'd like to open the floor again to any questions about those housing related metrics. Okay, uh, just a reminder that uh, if you wanna ask a question, you can raise your hand or type it directly into the chat box. And there will be some dead air as we go through this because we wanna make sure that people have an opportunity to participate. Um, so please just bear with us. Okay. All right. Doesn't look like we have, oh, here we, go. we do have a question here. All right, I see a question here from Marie Curry. Can you please comment on the strengths and deficiencies in the lead? So the question cuts off, but um, I assume it's a question about the lead poisoning metrics. And I do just want to point out that the SHA already includes data on elevated blood lead levels in young children. That data is already included. And the metric um, that is proposed here is looking at the index of risk for lead poisoning. And I'm going to turn it back over to Zach to explain that a little more. Sure, so that metric is actually an index that uses um, data about the age of housing uh, at the city, census tract or city level and combines it with information about um, the percent of population that's living in poverty um, because both of those uh, factors tend to be um, contributors to ex exposure to lead. Um, so one limitation is that it is not measuring the actual uh, exposure to lead for individuals living in those census tracts or in those cities, but is using population level um, data to um, make some determinations about that. Another potential uh, limitation is that uh, most of Ohio's biggest cities that are covered in the city health dashboard um, are at the top of this index, um, meaning they were given a 10 out of 10 being the highest exposure index. Okay, we have a few more questions here in the chat box. Um, for housing, have you considered the number of affordable housing units um, is one, we'll get to that in a minute. And then none of the housing metrics are ideal, pretty limited at both the state 
and local levels. So uh, on that second point, I'll say yes, <laughs> we are working with um, the data that are available. Ideally, we like to have data that is available at the state level and at the local level, and it is challenging to find um, that data that also has comparison to US. Um, and then the question about the number of affordable housing units, um, that's certainly something we can look into. I think we have pulled that data before. We'll need, we would need to be able to put that into some context. Um, get affordable, there, there are different definitions of affordability, but um, that's a great suggestion and we will look into that. And we have a question here regarding drug courts. Okay. Regarding drug courts, it would be helpful to know if they allow all forms of MAT. Uh, so the data that we have currently, I don't believe indicates whether or not they provide MAT, but we can look into that. And it may be possible that we can get data from the Ohio Department of uh, mental health and addiction services that would specify that. So if it's if that's something you think would be valuable, um, let us know. All right, I'm not seeing any more comments. I'm going to scan for raised hands here. Whoop, I see one. Okay, we have a raised hand, Marla Morse. We will unmute you. All right, I see that Marla has also typed into the chat box. The question is, what about quality of housing in terms of impact on chronic disease, such as asthma in children and relationships to mold and ED visits for asthma? And I, I think that the housing quality metric that we've pulled gets at that a little bit. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Zach to say more. Yeah, it's, it's certainly not a perfect measure of those um, direct impacts on a child's health like asthma or, or exposure to mold, um, but gets, in, uh, gets to conditions in the house. Um, so in this metric, um, which is a metric developed using census data, um, the, the public use microsample data um, for homes that don't have complete kitchens, do not have functioning plumbing, or are not overcrowded uh, or, or severely cost burdened. I see Karen Commodore has raised her hand, but it looks like um, you are muted or haven't put in the audio pin. So if you could either unmute yourself and or put in the audio pin, then we can hear you. Otherwise, you can uh, type your question in the question box. Ah, I see a question here from Raina Sims. Will oversampling occur so that data can be broken down by race and ethnicities in locations that typically didn't have statistically significant samples in the past? Um, this is a really important point about some of the data limitations that we have with many of these sources that have not oversampled. Um, so it's really going to differ by source. Um, some of the census data, um, I think we can look at things more finely broken out, but many of the metrics are coming from sources like the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance Survey. Um, and so in those cases, we would need oversampling in the BRFIS, um, and that is certainly an important issue, but isn't going to be resolved by the, the online Shaw. And I see um, a question from Marie Curry. What is cost burdened? Um, there is a definition of that from the census. Can you answer that, Zach? Yep. Okay. Um, this metric specifically looks at severely cost burdened, which is 50% of income on housing costs. Thank you, Zach. Another um, question here about definitely would support a metric on affordability of housing since that gets to more social determinants of health. So we will definitely look into that. Um, have you considered metrics around health literacy? What organizations and local health departments are addressing the issue and training providers 
um, in health literacy principles. I don't think we've found a really good source of data on health literacy. If anyone on the call is familiar with um, a good source that would give us state level or local level data on health literacy, um, please let us know. All right, any other hands raised? No? Okay. We will, I will turn it back over to Zach. All right, so now we'll go ahead and throw the poll question. Lana's gonna pull that up here. The question is, uh, for housing, which metric is most important to add to the 2019 Shaw? Housing quality, home ownership, lead exposure risk index, or homelessness? We'll give you a moment to respond to that and show you the results. And we need everybody to please vote if you're on the call. stepped away to have a conversation please step back into the webinar to vote now all right and looks like we're getting up there results are coming in here we're at 70 percent let's get it up a little more and we're kind of stalled out here so <laughs> and so 51% on the housing quality metric uh, and the next uh, high, highest vote getter was the homelessness. And so thank you very much. Um, we're going to follow the same format uh, to discuss these next metrics. Now we'll move on to transportation. So in transportation, we're looking at alternative commute modes. Um, long commutes for people driving alone, um, car access, walk score, and then a job access rate. Again, metrics marked with asterisks are available at the city and or census tract level only. All right, so now we'll move on to the discussion about the transportation metrics. Uh, so again, please, if you have a question, it seemed like typing those questions into the chat box was working very well. Um, so please go ahead and type your uh, questions into the box and or raise your hand um, if you'd like to speak with the group. All right, and we've got Alana looking through her questions here. I'm not seeing any questions about the transportation metrics. Lots of energy around housing, but not some. Oh, here we go. Um, Susan Sprigg says, I'm interested in the job access rate metric, but I'm concerned that it's only one time availability. Yes, that is a limitation with this metric. It comes from a report from the Brookings Institution. Um, it is only one point in time. Um, hopefully they'll update it at some point in the future, but at this point it is just one year. Okay. What about the possibility of a local measure regarding proximity to healthcare provider. I have not seen that data, uh, but if anyone has a source that you can send us, we would definitely be interested in looking at that. And I will point out that I will point out that in the Shaw currently we have um, some information about uh, access in underserved uh, areas. Uh, and that gets at the ratio of providers to patients in areas that are designated as health profession shortage areas. Another um, question here from Ashley Davis. I was thinking that a few of these metrics, alternative commute mode, long commute, 
driving alone, and car access were monitored during the last SHAW or potentially within the specific objective. Um, we didn't have data on those metrics in the 2016 SHAW. I think we discussed um, transportation in the context of the chronic disease um, objective or chronic disease area of the ship. And when we were talking about strategies, uh, I know we definitely talked about some transportation related strategies. So that will certainly be another thing that we'll consider as we plan and select the, the strategies for the ship this time around, since there was so much interest and focus on transportation in the regional forum discussions, we will make sure that we um, address transportation in some way in um, probably in all sections of the ship. Great point, thank you. I don't see any other questions on this one, so let's move on. Wonderful. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, Alana will throw the poll question. And that question is for transportation. Uh, which of the metrics on the screen here is most important to add to the Shaw? Alternative commute modes, long commute driving alone, car access, the walk score, or the job access rate measure? Again, please do uh, make sure you're participating in this crucial element of the webinar. It's where we have an opportunity to give input on the metrics that are available through this Shaw. All right, we're up to about 64% of the vote. Moving up here, it can get a little bit higher. It's a tough decision, but. All right, we're going to go ahead and call it here and show you the result. Oh, <laughs> see, you didn't want to be left out. All right, now we'll throw them. So this one was a much closer than the um, housing. So 29% of the vote with alternative commute modes, um, car access with 33, and job access rate with the 21%. All right, so now we will um, continue our process here and discuss the child welfare and kinship care metrics. Children's services, um, children in the custody of children's services and parental drug use, uh, children in foster care, children who are in the custody of children's services that are placed with kin, and then children's service placement costs, and that's an overall statewide cost from a point in time. So we'll quickly move on here to discussion about these metrics. Um, just to note that these metrics all come from a report produced by the public, excuse me, the Public Children's Services Association of Ohio. Please go ahead and raise your hand, or you can type your question into the question box. Scanning here for any raised hands, and I'm not seeing any yet. Here's a question from Raina. Oh, this is following back up on the neighborhood safety issue. This was a comment about the um, transportation access issue and the importance of also considering neighborhood safety. And there is a metric. Um, regarding neighborhood safety, it's not necessarily combined with the transportation access piece, but um, safety and crime are included. Here's a question from Ann Goon. Local DJFS offices know exactly how many children are in foster care and kinship care. So why is the data only available at the state level? Um, I think that has to do with the report that we were able to access. Um, but you're right, that information must be available at the local level. So um, it would just be an issue of finding, um, being able to pull all of that county level data together. And we can certainly look into that and see if that's possible. Question 
question from Susan. Interesting, tracking different things, children in foster care, health impacts. The percent with parental drug use is focused more on the impact of the opioid epidemic. Both could be useful to track for different reasons. Yeah, there are a few, few different um, ways to look at that PCSAO data. And then we have a question from Marie. Um, placed in foster care and placed with kin. Does kin refer to no ongoing children's services involvement? We'll, we'll have to take a closer look at the PCSO, PCSAO report. I'm not quite sure. All right, not seeing any raised hands. Uh, so I'll turn it back over to Zach. All right, so we will go ahead and throw our poll question. You won't be surprised by it. So relating to child welfare and kinship care, which, met which metric is most important to add to the Shaw? Uh, children's services, custody and parental drug use. Uh, children and children in foster care placements, children in kin placements, and child support placement costs. Again, this is for the state. Um, please do vote. Vote. We're already at 50%. People are picking up on this. We're not going to get off the hook. All right. And. Live polling, we want to get it up just a little bit higher here. Perfect. Okay, so here are the results. We've got 41% voting for um, custody of children's services with parental drug use, and then 41% um, for children in foster care. Thank you very much. Now we'll move on to our next um, topic area, which came up at the regional forums, um, and this is hepatitis. Um, and for, for this topic area, we have two metrics, um, incidence of hepatitis C and incidence of hepatitis A. I'll turn it over to my colleague, Amy, for the um, questions on these metrics. All right, please raise your hand or type in the question box. We have any questions or thoughts on hepatitis? Question from Krista Wasowski: Do we have to vote for either? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I should say that at the very end of this, we're, we're going to have one poll where you can um, pick which of these five categories you feel is most important, because likely what we'll end up doing is selecting maybe um, two or three for housing and maybe only one for hepatitis since there are fewer options. So we do want to get a sense of overall which topics you think are most important. So if you do not want to vote for hepatitis, you do not have to. <laughs> Obviously, the reason that hepatitis C came up in the regional forums um, and in the online survey is because we have seen an increase in hepatitis C um, related to the opioid crisis. I'm not seeing any questions on hepatitis, so we will move it along to the So our poll question is, for hepatitis, which of these metrics is most important to be added to the Shaw? Hepatitis C incidence or hepatitis A incidence? And we're getting pretty quick and Resounding results on this one. All right. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and throw the answers now. Uh, looks like hepatitis C took this one with 90%. All right. So now we'll move on to our last category, which is medication medication-assisted treatment and drug courts. 
Um, and so here we're looking at uh, counties with all three forms of medication-assisted treatment for opioid use disorder and counties with a specialized docket or drug court. And again, Amy will handle questions on these metrics. Don't see any yet. Um, remember to use the question box if you want to type in a question or you can raise your hand. I don't think we've successfully been able to get anyone to speak. <laughs> All right, not not seeing anything, so I'll turn it back over. All right, so. Oh. Sorry, I'm back. Uh, question here from um, Jim Watkins. Was there consideration of needle exchange um, and naloxone provision to the public? Um, we could track, we could include the number of needle exchanges in Ohio, um, but we don't necessarily have good comparison data. Um, so I'm not sure how useful that could be. We can certainly consider it as a strategy um, during the strategy selection phase. Um, naloxone provision, um, there is some data on, on um, naloxone administrations, but there are some issues with tracking that in a, in a consistent way. Um, and so I think that's probably best addressed in the strategy selection um, portion of the ship. Okay, and then um, question from Brittany, can both be included since it's a hot topic? Yep, potentially, yep, absolutely. Um, Terry Allen says, I agree with Jim on syringe exchange programs by number if that's all you have available. And then Kelly Smith says, for MAT providers, can you please include all three forms of MAT in a county rather than identifying a county with at least one form? We do have that information from the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. There is a, a map that, that we could share, and so we can figure out how to get that included in the online SHA. All right, I think that's it. Wonderful. We'll go ahead and throw our final um, topic area poll question for medication-assisted treatment and drug courts. Which metric is most important to include in the online SHA? Uh, counties with all three forms of medication-assisted treatment uh, or counties with specialized dockets. Again, please vote uh, by making one of those selections. And I think we're going to get there quicker and quicker each time. Thank you very much for your participation in this. Um, we appreciate the engagement through technology. Try and get it just a little higher here on our last vote, because this is such an important topic in the state of Ohio, and we're getting there. All right, we'll go ahead and close it. And it looks like the um, counties with all three forms of medication-assisted treatment had the most votes, 76%. Now we'll uh, turn it back over to Amy to review the Shaw summary report. I apologize, I forgot uh, we actually have one more poll question and this is to help us get at the um, question Amy uh, or Krista asked earlier um, and this is, which topic area do you think is most important to expand on in the Shaw? Uh, housing, transportation, child welfare, kinship care, hepatitis, and or MAT and drug courts. All right, where are we at? Still pretty low here. I get up to about 75% of attendees is where we try to get. Results, we are getting close. Thank you again for your participation. 
All right, we'll go ahead and call it. It looks like housing uh, with 50%, and then transportation and medication-assisted treatment drug courts um, both came in with 22% of the vote. Um, so again, thank you very much uh, for engaging with us in this process uh, through the webinar. And now I'll... All right, thanks for walking us through that, Zach. And thank you everyone for your input and your really good questions. Now I'm just gonna talk briefly about the summary report that we will be pulling together that will supplement the online Shaw. In the report, we'll be talking about these three things. And so you can see the cross-cutting factors there in the, in the middle, which include those social determinants of health. So it'll be really helpful to have that additional housing and transportation information included. Here is a draft outline of the Shaw summary report. You had the um, more detailed outline in your review packet. So hopefully everyone's had a chance to look at that. So those are the components that will be included. So really we'll be pulling out key themes that emerge from our analysis of the online Shaw. And we have one more discussion question here, um, which is what suggestions do you have for disseminating the Shaw summary report or disseminating the online Shaw? I guess just what, what suggestions do you have about dissemination in general or any other comments or questions about the summary report? You can raise your hand. We really do want you to be able to speak up. Um, so you raise your hand if you'd like to try to speak on the call or type in the question box. Um, we can also circle back if you have any questions um, about the online Shaw, if there was anything um, that you didn't have a chance to ask uh, or something else that you've thought of um, from the demonstration that Accenture did. A little bit of time for that as well. Okay, here's a suggestion from Raina Sims. Um, communicating directly with church health ministries. Okay, great suggestion. Thank you, Raina. Um, if you have a suggestion for a good directory of how we can really reach a lot of churches to disseminate the, the Sean Chip too, that would be great. Renee Steffen, you may already do this, but sharing it with Philanthropy Ohio would be great to keep funders in the state aware, and we will definitely share with Philanthropy Ohio's health initiative. Local health departments can get the summary um, in front of a wide audience through our local CHIP committees. Great, that's a wonderful idea from Krista Wasowski. Um, Raina suggests communicating with local community action agencies, and we actually did a presentation recently to the Association of Community Action Agencies, and they were very interested in the SHIP and the Shaw. From Ann Goon, I'm thinking there would be wider dissemination if the push came from the local level to local media and agencies in addition to release at the state level. Great suggestion, kind of reminds me of what County Health Rankings does um, when they work to push information out through local media as well as through the state level. Please share with Charitable Health Network, formerly Ohio Association of Free Clinics. Great suggestion from Tiff Huber. Um, from Raina Sims, we have communicating with local urban leagues. Okay, so we will, we will keep a running list of all of these suggested organizations and um, start building our dissemination list so we can um, have that ready for when the Shaw is released. Ashley Davis suggests area agencies on aging. Great. Terry Allen, consider social media on speci specific components um, that you want to feature perhaps a focus on different domains like MCH, chronic disease, and opioid-related data. Great suggestion. Cheryl Wynn, 
local stakeholders can push out via social media, Ohio Association of Health Centers, and we, we have a hand raised, and it is Don Miller. Don. Um, I would recommend uh, the statewide OEIs and Pathways Community Hubs. Awesome, thank you. See, it really does work. <laughs> Do we have anyone else with a raised hand? No, we got some more typed comments here. Other great suggestions, Ohio Family and Children First Councils, um, local Chon Chip work groups um, could view a pre-recorded webinar. That is certainly doable. Um, Raina Sims, perhaps working to get um, get to schools with healthcare centers, so school-based health centers, great suggestion. All right, any more? Oh, no, nope, that was Don. All right, I don't see any more hands raised. Another suggestion here, local atom boards, absolutely. And we did have several uh, atom boards represented at the regional forums, and um, we'll certainly be reaching out to them quite a bit during this process. United Way. All right, these are great suggestions. Thank you so much for helping us to build this dissemination list. If you think of other organizations to push it out to, um, you can always um, send me an email or, or reach out to the folks at ODH as well. I'm gonna move us along to the last part of our meeting. Great, which is um, looking at next steps. Our next advisory committee meeting will be Tuesday, April 23rd. This will be an in-person meeting um, here at HPIO in downtown Columbus. Please make sure you register. Um, you should have received an email. Um, it's also on our website. Um, you can get to the link to register on our website. Quick, um, before we do our evaluation of this meeting, a uh, quick recap of the meeting objectives. So this is what we um, was our goal to do on this call today. And we have one final poll question for you. So were the objectives of this meeting met? Do you strongly agree, agree that they were met? Not sure, disagree, strongly disagree. Well, we wanna get to about 70% of folks voting. All right, we made it. Thank you so much. We really appreciate all of the ideas and input that everyone shared on the call today. And we thank the Accenture team for um, demonstrating the really cool online shot. And I'm sure you're all very excited to get the link from us so that you can get in there and start clicking around and pull down your county level data and look at some of those um, comparisons between Ohio and the US and um, disparity breakouts and all of the great rich um, detail that is there. So um, you, you, will re you will receive a sneak peek at the, um, at the online Shaw. And if you have any other questions about the process or anything else we went over today, please don't hesitate to send me an email and have a fabulous rest of your Valentine's Day. I'm sure this has been very romantic. <laughs> <laughs> and stay warm.